watching. It's happy in the country, dog, not the city slot. Big winner. Inside of San Remo. Thought we'd let you see how it looked. On that back road we used to take out there. There, I got that sign pulled right up here close. This is that Lexar. It's shaped like a pyramid. It's supposed to open up September or October. Now you can see it. I got the camera back there. It opens up, I think, in September or October with Treasure Island, along with Treasure Island. One thing bad about that, it's all mirrored. When you drive down on Tropic Canada at a certain time of day, that sunshine hits that mirror and just blinds you. You can't see a damn thing. Treasure Island opens up next month, Dorothy, September. Right next to the uh, Mirage. Dorothy. He's Modoc. Here old Modoc. I'm going to get a picture of him by these waterfalls. Two little asses, girl. Uh -oh. Say hi to Ma. What? Say hi. Somebody in a uh, Denny's restaurant here. It's supposed to be the largest Denny's restaurant in the world. They tore down the little one they had there. But this one's really going to occupy, occupy some space. I want to take a picture of them gals a little ass. You know what I mean. Little butts. Uh, Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I see them. Ducks in the Mirage. Yeah. Ducks out by the Mirage in the pond. One of them named Gary and the other one named Carolyn. One named Gary and the other one named Carolyn. Bubby and Dubby. Bubby and it's Dubby. Dubby. Caesar's Fountains. Imperial Palace. <laughs> Shit. I thought you could go down that way. We gotta go through the casino. Go ahead. I thought there was one going each way. buildings look like now, Dorothy. We had them all painted. They're not the best, but they look okay. They look better than what they did. I can never get... This is uh, the A building. Excuse me. There's the entrance to the office. We got shrubbery in there now, where we used to have flowers. We put shrubbery in there. Not so much upkeep. There's Mandy with Colbert, her, her new puppy. Hi, hi, Mandy. Dad, you promised. You said I could have the van. He's right, Chris. I did promise him the van. All right, Scott. I'll keep that promise on one condition. Oh, those. Well, those aren't mine. What are they doing in your book bag, then? What are you doing in my book bag? You left it wide open on the dining room table. Please, have one more for the road, huh? I think I've kind of had enough already. <laughs> I gotta get home before the whole block washes away. Oh, whoa, are you, you sure you're okay to drive? I'm fine, doing yeah. fine. Hey, watch it. The punch bowl's over there. Mom, but it's a wedding. It's why we make rules in this family. Keep all of us safe and well. But I should have given you a chance to explain. Dad, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I should have listened to you. Dad, listen to me now, please. Family talk. It isn't always easy, especially when it comes to a tough issue like alcohol and other drugs. Each generation speaks its own language. Too often, there are differences between what we mean what we say and what the other people hear. Wouldn't it be great if family talks could be like international meetings where every exchange is interpreted by a translator, someone to explain what's really being said? In the scenes that follow, as parents and kids talk to each other, 
I invite you to be the translator. Listen carefully to what each person says. Listen for what they really mean and try to imagine what the person they're talking to is hearing. After each scene, you can pause this video for your own family talk. Use the Now You're Talking guide to help identify questions. Listen to the different ways the people around you can interpret the same scene. Look for agreement. Now you're talking. This first family discussion happens because the teenager Scott makes a promise to his friends and his parents make it difficult for him to keep that promise. Scott brings a hidden agenda into the conversation. So does his mother, Chris. Do adults face the same peer pressure that kids face? Scott's father tries to find a compromise, but will Scott's plans allow him to agree to it? Listen closely and make your own interpretation. You guys hear about the party next Saturday? Yeah, Riverside Park. Ought to be a good one. It's supposed to be at least a couple kegs. You going? I don't know, maybe. I need a ride. Me too. I gotta find me a designated driver, because I'm in a mood to party. I can drive. You? That's a first. My dad's going out of town. He said I could have the van whenever he's gone. Yeah, but did he say Riverside? He said I could have the van. Besides, I won't be drinking anyway. A van? Okay, we're in business, guys. Okay, if you call Mike? Sure. We got room for eight. How about Jer and some of the other guys? No problem. No problem, Karen. I hate to keep leaning on you like this, Chris, but Pat won't have her car either. She's got a ton of clothes and rummage. We, oh, we've got to haul my stuff and her but stuff. Believe me, Karen, it's okay. I mean, Dwight's not going to be using his van this weekend, and it's got plenty of room. So why don't I pick you up at, say, 10 o'clock on Saturday? We'll haul it all down to the church, and then we can sort it out there. Oh, thanks, Chris. Pat was really worried. I told her we could count on you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Frank's picking me up at 5 a.m. We should be on the lake by 7. You sure you don't want to go? No, thanks, Dad. Okay. I'm going with a bunch of guys tomorrow. Is it okay if I take the van? Sure. Where are you going? Um... Just Riverside Park. Isn't that where they busted all those kids for drinking and driving? Well, it was just a couple of kids. Oh, that's not what I heard, Scott. Yeah, I'm not so sure I want you taking my van down there. But, Dad, everyone's gonna be there. Well, but I promised my friends I'd pick them up for the church rummage sale. Why don't you take the bus? Are you kidding? I'm not gonna show up at Riverside on a stupid bus. What's wrong with taking a bus? I used to take a bus all the time. But Danny and Mark and everyone's counting on me for a ride. Well, Scott, you can't let your friends run your life. But, Dad, you promised. You said I could have the van. He's right, Chris. I did promise him the van. All right, Scott. I'll keep that promise on one condition. You have to promise there won't be any beer drinking. Do adults face peer pressure? Do parents have to make compromises? Can Scott promise his parents that no one will drink? Can he still keep his word to his friends? Take a few minutes to use your guide and talk it over. You can stop this video now and start again when you're ready. In this next scene, Mom confronts her daughter, Jana with some troubling evidence. She has found these in Jana's book bag. Cigarette papers for rolling up tobacco, or perhaps even marijuana. As you watch, think about this. Where is the border between a parent's responsibility and a kid's privacy? And what happens when that border is crossed? Is Jana's explanation really convincing? Or is mom willing to accept any story that allows her to duck an uncomfortable situation? Sometimes, we see things the way we want them to be. Jana, I want to talk to you. Uh, look at me. I, um found these in your book bag. What? These, uh, papers. Oh, those. Well, those aren't mine. What are they doing in your book bag, then? What are you doing in my book bag? You left it wide open on the dining room table. You were prying in my bag. Don't I have any right to privacy? Not when you're doing things like this. I wasn't doing anything. 
How do you explain this, then? I was keeping those for a friend. What friend? You don't know her. She's new. What's her name? Carol. Carol who? Carol something. I don't remember. I just met her. I know what these are for. She was trying her dad's pipe tobacco, Mom. Honest. What's wrong with that? And she asked you to keep these papers for her? Well, she was afraid he would find out. She says he gets really wild about her smoking. Well, I don't like you having friends like that. I want you to give these back to her, okay? Okay, Mom. Jonna, I don't like you hanging around with girls like that. They'll get you into trouble, for sure. All right, Mother, I will stay away from her, I promise. I mean it, Jonna. Yes, Mother! Has the communication between Jonna and Mom been good or bad? Does Mom really believe Jonna? Or is she avoiding the issue? Does Jonna believe mom accepts her story? Where do you draw a line between a kid's right of privacy and a parent's responsibility? You can stop this video now for discussion, then we'll go on. This next scene is a nice little party. The host's idea of hospitality is overflowing. Cal and Jesse's drinks are overflowing. In fact, even the babysitter, well, you'll see what happens to her. The question is, when everything is overflowing, whose job is it to say stop? She was standing by the phone the whole time. Every time I was like, you were? You were? Was I by the phone? Yes, you were. Anyway, I'm glad you were here. Hi. Thank you. I'm glad you were here. Hi. How are you folks doing? Oh, hey, good, man. Hey, thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. You know me, Bill. I'm always ready. Good man. Don't be shy. Say when. Thank you. Jesse? Just to taste it. Jesse! Jesse! Tell him. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Nording. This is Eileen. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm sorry. Can you talk louder? I can't hear you. This is Eileen. Baby's fine. She's sleeping. Yes, that's right. She's sleeping. But something's happened. Just, um, it's the babysitter. What? Is it the baby? Hang on. What do you want to talk to her? Hi, this cow. What's the problem? What? Oh. I'm not going to say it. Uh, you're not, you're uh, not all right, all right. Listen up here, Eileen. Um, there, there's a chrome knob on a little pipe on the bottom of the tank. Um, you got to turn that uh, knob. Uh, uh, turn that knob clockwise all the way. That, that'll shut off the water, okay? Right. Yeah, okay, Eileen. We'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay. All right, bye. Oh, no. I'm having such a good time. <laughs> Is the baby okay? The baby's fine. Uh, we gotta go. Uh, okay. Toilet's backed up all over the house. Oh, what a shame. Well, can't you just stay a little longer and Please, have one more for the road, huh? Uh, I think I've kind of had enough already. <laughs> I gotta get home before the whole block washes away. Oh, whoa, are you, you sure you're okay to drive? I'm fine, Bill. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm glad you're <laughs> fine. I sure don't feel like driving. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you guys Oh, thanks. Oh, it was great. We gotta do this again. Yeah. I shut off the water like you said, Mr. Nording. And I've cleaned up as much as I could. I'm really sorry. Hey, hey, oh, listen, honey, Eileen. This is not your fault God, now. It's okay. This thing's happened before. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. How about, Ooh. uh, is that gonna take care of you? Well, yes. That's plenty. Thank you very much. Hey, Jess, uh, listen. I gotta get this toilet working mm. again. Do you think you could take Eileen home? Sure. Good. All right. Well, good night, Eileen. Should Cal have been driving in his condition? Who makes that decision? Do the hosts who serve the drinks have some responsibilities? 
And how could a babysitter get home safely in this situation? Right now, before the next party, or the next babysitting job, is a good time for all of you to talk it over. Family celebrations, warm, wonderful times, special occasions with special rules. This next scene is a wedding day. The vows have been spoken, the pastor has given his blessing, the reception is underway. We won't bore you with all of the speeches and toasts, but you'll see other kinds of family communication, especially between the generations. <laughs> Champagne is for the grown ups. Well, Danny's not a grown up, and he had real champagne. Well, never you mind about Danny. You're too young, and that's that. does alcohol play in family celebrations? Should adults in the family agree on rules about drinking? Do rules only apply to kids? What do adult actions teach children about drinking? There's plenty here to think about and to talk about right now. The most important rules we live by are written in stone. Clear, concise, unchangeable. But family rules are a lot less certain. The more important the issue, the less clear are the rules. Think about it. In most families, kids have a better idea of the rules about gum chewing and grammar than they do about sex or alcohol and other drugs. We all try to play by the rules, but we don't always agree on what the rules are, especially if we never talk about them. In this next scene, Pete, the dad, insists that a rule has been broken. Do you think Danny clearly understands the rule? Do you believe Danny was playing by the rules? I don't know what to do about you, Danny. I mean, do you think I don't know what's going on? What? You were at that beer party in the park last night, weren't you? Weren't you? Well, sort of. Yeah, Danny, but... Danny, Danny, you're always asking me to trust you. How can I? Didn't I tell you to stay away from those things? I gave you my car, you got drinking with your buddies. But I wasn't. Please, don't make it any worse. Mr. Danforth saw you there when he picked up Jerry. He called me this morning. Well, yeah, I was there. But I wasn't drinking. You expect me to believe that? It's the truth. Ask anybody. Well, you were there. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's enough. I thought I'd be okay, as long as I didn't drink. I told you not to go. You went. Those are the facts, right? I thought you meant because of the drinking. Let me repeat. I told you not to go to keg parties. You went. 
You were seen there. I was only there for a few minutes. I was just trying to find Vicky. She wasn't there, so I left right away. Honest. Makes no difference. That's all there is to it. You're grounded for the month. No car and no dates. That's not fair. I wasn't drinking. Well, that's too bad. A rule is a rule. Should a rule always be a rule? Pete is standing firm on a position. I told you not to go there. Would he be better off working from a principle? For instance, that underage drinking is illegal and dangerous? Which makes for more effective conflict resolution? There's plenty here to talk about. A rule is a rule only when everyone understands and agrees to it. To come up with a rule that works, Danny and his father will have to talk and listen to each other. Will that solve all problems? No. The road to open family talk can take some unexpected turns. As you'll see in this final scene, if the family can't always find the perfect answers, at least they're beginning to ask the right questions. It's OK, son. It helps that you leveled with me, Danny. You did break a rule and the law. We're going to have to deal with that. Hey, maybe it's time we all sit down and talk about this. Yeah? Sarah, honey, will you bring a notebook and a pen? Got it, Mom. OK. <clears throat> We've had a little confusion around here the past few days about house rules on drinking. So we want to talk about them tonight. Look, you kids are trying to grow up, become more independent. We want that to happen, believe me. But at the same time, your mom and I have an obligation to protect you. That's why we sometimes have these conflicts. Obviously, we just can't ban everything. But we need to make some clear rules about alcohol and other drugs, and rules that are fair to everyone, OK? So, where do you want to start? Danny, uh, those parties that all your buddies go to, how can we let you go to them if we know that there might be drinking going on there? You and Dad go to parties where there's drinking. And you're OK with that. Yeah, true, but our friends can drink legally, and yours can't. Well, I know. But say one of your friends is drinking too much and gets in an accident, do you get arrested? No. OK. So is it fair to ground me just because kids are drinking and smoking around me? Uh, how can I go anywhere? Good question. Hard to answer. The important questions are difficult. The rules your family makes may be different from theirs. And rules that make sense today may not work for all of you tomorrow or next year. Whether you talk about alcohol and other drugs, about responsibilities at home, family rules have to change and grow just as people change and grow. It isn't easy. You have to work at it. Rarely are there perfect answers. But there can be clear understandings, and there must be fairness and compromise. Now that you've finished this video, try sitting down with everyone in your family. Use the Now You're Talking guide to help open up your own talk about alcohol and other drugs. Parents and kids. Talk about your feelings, your experiences, your concerns, and listen, really listen to each other. Work together to reduce conflicts and misunderstandings. Look for things you can all agree on. Use the rules section of the guide to make family rules clear and fair. When everyone understands and lives by the rules, you can all enjoy your family life to the fullest.